Memnon, king of Ethiopia, offers a horde experience the likes of which has never been seen before in Total War. Let's explore what the king has to offer to those who pick up Rhesus and Memnon, the newest hero pack for a Total War saga, Troy. The nephew of King Priam of Troy has ventured north to the Aegean to assist his uncle in the struggles against the Achaeans. As we begin our campaign, we find ourselves on the island of Rhodes, ready to lay waste to the enemies of Troy. To the field of battle! Memnon's roster features a diverse selection of various Northeast African and West Asian cultures. For example, units from Ethiopia have vanguard deployment, while Egyptian troops can switch between spear and shield and two-handed axes, which allows them to adapt to whatever is needed in the heat of battle. However, with the overall lack of armor and morale, we must be cautious in how we play. The light units allow us to quickly flank and surround our enemies, but we want to make sure our front line doesn't break and give the opponent easy access to our ranged units. One of the unique qualities to Memnon's campaign is how he recruits new units. As a horde army, we cannot take settlements and instead construct buildings on the armies themselves. However, unlike traditional horde armies, we have no buildings that allow us to recruit new units. Instead, the king of Ethiopia sends for reinforcements from the homelands. In Pharaoh's Servant, we get an overview of the lands under the influence of the Pharaoh. Each region has unique units to send for, but at the start of the game we are limited to Sais, Kerma and Napata. Through royal decrees and building chains, we gain access to more regions with more and stronger units. Let's recruit from Napata. As you can see, the reinforcements come with an upfront cost. However, when we add these units into our army, we will only have the upkeep to deal with, and they are all instantly recruited into the army. Should we find ourselves teeming with resources, we can use this mechanic to create a stockpile of recruitable units and quickly get a full army going later on. Continuing on, we'll attack Chimeros. However, I know that there's an army sneaking around here somewhere. Let's see if I can lure them out by encircling the settlement. Got him! To make sure we utilize our light units to the best of their abilities, let's take our Ethiopian spearmen and hide them in these bushes. We'll position the rest of our army so that our opponents will unwittingly pass by our spearmen. Once they have a chance, our hidden units can pounce, scattering the enemy slingers and hit their front lines in the back. Time to test our skill. As we raise settlements, we gain various resources, with each settlement having its own bonuses signified by this icon here. However, we're still light on some resources to upgrade our horde's primary building. Let's see if we can make some friends. The friend of my friend should surely also be my friend, and Sarpedon of Delicia is definitely friendly with Troy. Our mission wants us to send a gift of gold, and the increased opinion of said gift will surely help us in the long run. Let's send Sarpedon his gold, and then we can make a barter. At once. We have an abundance of food, but what we really need is wood. Surely Sarpedon will give us what we require. Stone's protector. I'll see it done. We also need to build up our army with more soldiers. Kerma has some great units to offer us, however, like all Ethiopian troops, their cost is heavy on wood. Meanwhile, Sais costs mainly food, which is a resource we have in abundance at this time. Here at Arcasia, we have a major settlement battle. Without armor, our units would be taking more damage than I'd be comfortable with just getting to the walls. But Memnon has a trick up his sleeve. Our Ethiopian troops have vanguard deployment, allowing us to start so close to the walls we can almost touch them. We can then avoid most of the damage from the towers and quickly get over the walls. Our troops will be exhausted from climbing up the ladders, but getting up there quickly will likely outweigh that in this situation. As the enemy breaks and our units push further into the city, the enemy falls back to protect the victory point in the town square. Yeah. 
Raising Arcacia has given us a bit of a unique gift, the ability to recruit giants. Unlike the units we gain through Pharaoh's Servant, these mythic units do have an upfront cost. In this case, food. If we are to assist King Priam and launch an all-out attack on Menelaus and Sparta, we'll need to take out his rear defense. Idomeneus of Crete stands in the way of our ancient oath and must be taken care of. It's time to take advantage of the second of Memnon's unique mechanics, Resourceful Strategist. Unlike the heroes of the Aegean, Memnon does not have agents like the Spy or Priestess. Instead, Memnon assigns followers to his camp, which gives him various bonuses. For example, the Egyptian Healer gives additional replenishments, while the Egyptian Assassin gives us an ability that damages the enemy hero. We'll be taking advantage of the latter right here, because I am not fancying that auto-resolve. enemy hero badly damaged, we should have him on the run quickly. And with their primary army gone, Knossos is ripe for the taking. We want to upgrade our primary building to Hero's Retinue, which will unlock the Egyptian territory of Memphis. However, we are a bit short on gold. Fortunately, using the War Spoils menu, we can find a source of gold close by. The time has come. The Scourge of Sparta has a name, and his name is Memnon. Rhesus and Memnon, the newest hero pack for a Total War Saga Troy, launches on the 14th of December on the Epic Games Store and Steam. Pre-order now to get 10% off or get the Ultimate Edition and save 40% overall.